Is Liberty Dying Where You Live? Escape to Keen at freekeen.com. Please be seated. New Hampshire Supreme Court is now in session. This is 2015 Church of the Sword versus Stephen Westmoreland. Good morning again. I'm from the Church of the Sword, and I ask to reserve two minutes for rebuttal. May it please the court. Church of the Sword is a religion. They do things you would expect many religious to do. Religious to do. They have hundreds of members. They've been how many members? Um, I believe um, the last point, uh, according to the affidavits, about the court, I think 450, constantly growing. They've been in religion for 25 years um, now. They have weekly services. They help the poor. They perform marriages. They just, By what authority do they perform marriages? They are licensed under the state, or they're incorporated in New Hampshire as a church. Is that the authority, or is it? Justice of the Peace Authority. They, I believe they have both Justice of Peace and also under the being incorporated in the Are all of the members uh, in the town? No, all the members are not in the town. So they have different, their services are at different locations. So there are some members in the town of Westmoreland, but there are also members throughout the state and their services are held throughout the state. And throughout the country? Um, to my understanding, the, their local religion at this point, um, everyone is in New Hampshire. One of the requirements to be a pastor is to, to be a dream, to be ordained, is to live in New Hampshire. So at this point, in New Hampshire. How many pastors are there? They have, I'm not sure the exact number. Um, they're constantly it's like growing and have different processes of what it takes to be ordained to be a pastor. So there are numerous pastors. So, so can I make sure I understand? There's, there, you said they have they have services and members throughout the state of New Hampshire. Yes, sir. Um, and there are a number of pastors. Yes, sir. And do they? How many pastors live in this property or have that that is that is uh, the subject of the taxes? Yep. So there is one pastor that the Mark Edmonton. He is the one occupying the property. That would be her sort of taxes. Is he, is he the leader of, of the Church of the Sword, or are there co-leaders, or how does that work? Yeah, so there's not a hierarchy such as Catholic, um, Catholic religion, there's a pope, so there's pastors, and they have guidelines of the doctrines that they have to follow to become ordained as a pastor. There's not a hierarchy in the sense that there's leaders such as the pope. Are those guidelines uh, part of the record that we have? Yes, they were submitted as um, the Church of the Sword's affidavit. So the affidavits of the trial court letter level were submitted both in the motion for summary judgment, I believe, as well as the opposition to summary judgment. And there was ultimately a uh, motion to reconsider, which I believe had an affidavit file verifying with it as well. And so is that part, and is that part of the record that we have, that is all the affidavits? I am not positive that was sent, transferred from the lower case, if not the affidavits that were filed with Town of Westmoreland, we covered pretty much 90% of it. The only supplemental affidavits stated how many members there are and went into on how it's in there. Well, I guess, I mean, I guess it seems, strikes me that that's relatively important. In other words, if you're saying that the trial court was wrong to grant summary judgment because the summary judgment record doesn't support what the trial court did, then as the appellant, it's your obligation to provide us with that record. And so. If, for example, you say the affidavits would show that there was a genuine issue of material fact, but you haven't give us, given us those affidavits, how do we, you know, our, our, our law is very clear that if you don't provide us with the record upon which we, can, we could rule that you are right, 
then you lose. I mean, that's, that's you know, there are, you've got 100 cases that say that. So I guess I, I, it's really kind of important to know, have you given us those affidavits? <laughs> I believe there's two sets of affidavits. I know both of them were filed with the trial court. I thought they would be part of the record transfer to the court. They don't, they don't okay. get transmitted by magic here. Uh, so you may want to check into that. And I will have to check the second set of affidavits. Well. Uh, can I follow up on the questions about casters? Um, are there rotating casters? In other words, is an individual a caster for a period of time and then Placed or once a caster, always a caster. Yeah, so once you're a caster, you're a caster, I suppose, at some point when you determine as a caster. But it's not a set specific amount of time, and you're not always a caster. Say this church, you're free to be a caster at the other churches throughout the state. Who ordained you? I'm sorry. Who ordained a pastor? Yep, so pastor is ordained by other pastors, and like I said, there is a specific set of criteria. And what's that? The specific set of criteria was laid out in the affidavit that we I'm having trouble finding the two buildings for. Um apologize if you have it. To, uh, uh, to, to 
propagator or whatever that that uh, point that would qualify as religion. I think it, if they have something else, I think spirituality is essential. I mean, I would suggest that um, Buddhism has hundreds of millions of people. They don't have a god. They're essentially working towards greater self improvement. I suggest that's exactly what the Church of the Sword is doing. You suggest here that in your brief that uh, somehow discovery had not been completed. What other discovery or information would assist you in meeting your burden of proof? Possibly towards a viewpoint discrimination. So we're not at the lower, or in the first instance, the town did not say why they denied the religion. They came up for the first sense, or for the first time in appeal. And if we could have shown, I don't know what the discovery would have shown, but it showed that they were denying church of sort and uh, giving these tax exemption as to other religions, that certainly is a constitutional issue. This, the town cannot favor one belief religion over the next. Couldn't you find that out from the public records? I don't think the denial or why a denial would be, um, but again, we weren't able to address this because the discovery was not complete. Well, what do you want? <coughs> you want a trial? Yes, we want a trial. I think the issue of whether the religion is it is a factual issue. If it's not a factual issue, certainly the factors that they have presented are more than sufficient uh, to uh, be or get around the motion for some judgment. Then I find some, I understand maybe you're not the author of the brief, but then I find some incongruity in the brief where it says on uh, page 28 that uh, the religious views espoused by the respondents might seem incredible, if not preposterous to most people, but if those documents are subject to trial before a jury, charged with finding their truth or falsity, then some, then the same can be done with the religious beliefs of any sect. Isn't that inconsistent with the request for a jury trial here? Well, I think it goes to the United States, the United States Supreme Court issue in Seeger, and we're asking the court to adopt the right line rule that if it's a sincerely held belief, that is all that matters in religion. And how do we determine this is the sincerity? That is a factual issue in this case that hasn't even been disputed, and at this point, the burden would be on them to show it was not sincere. Sincere well, and healthy. If you were to achieve a jury trial, as you're interested in, what instruction would the court give to the jury in making its determination? Yes, and the lower court recognized that there isn't much, that this is essentially an issue of first impression. We would ask that the court to make some finding. The court could say these are certain factors that the jury can consider, such as the factors the IRS standards use, or they could just use this bright line rule. If this is a sincerely held belief, then that is entitled to, entitled to religious protection. So in your view, a sincerely held belief would be the only element that the jury would have to decide? That is certainly one court or one approach the court could take. It would, like I said, be a bright line rule. I think it supports the case law seeker and more recently the U.S. Supreme Court um, hobby law decision where they deal with sincerely held beliefs. Does the pastor in this case have uh, another job? I do not know the answer to that. Do I understand correctly that there are a number of pastors that uh, reside in the town? That I am specifically Mark Chad Mark is the one for this property. I do not know the answer. But if, if you were to ultimately prevail, uh, at least as I understand it, 90% of the basis for this is that it's a parsonage for a pastor. Correct. And so if there were multiple pastors in the town, then it would logically follow that they too would have parsonages that would be entitled to an exemption. Well, I think that has to be a separate property that you have to then apply to the town for that other property. I see you in one Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honors. I'm Silas Moon. I represent the town of Westland. Uh, this case is somewhat unique, at least in my experience, in a motion for summary judgment because the basis for my application for summary judgment was the Church of the Sewers of Answers and Interrogatories. Uh, when the issue of discovery arose, I found the interrogatories. I think there was some delay in getting back down to receive any interrogatories. Then I filed a motion for summary judgment. It was not a motion filed, uh, which I've seen in the past where a party says they're not prepared to answer a motion for summary judgment because they need to do discovery. And my 
experience where that motion was presented to the court. And so what is the summary judgment record in this case? It's the answers to interrogatories. That I propounded to the church of the summary. With no affidavit. With, with my affidavit right. saying that these are the answers. Right, got that. Made under oath. Do we have affidavits from the other side? What? Do we have affidavits from the other side? We don't. Uh, we do not have an affidavit as such from the other side in opposition. They filed an objection, and then they filed a memorandum. And then at the end of the memorandum, there was a oath. An attestation. But it was not an affidavit as such. They blended the arguments of law with the statement of fact. So, yeah, tab three is that uh, memorandum. Yes. Mr. Bloom has a certificate at the end and uh, do I even though this copy isn't signed, was that a was a signed copy filed in the court that was signed by Mr. Bloom under penalties of perjury or sworn swearing to it? What we have isn't signed, but I do well, I understand I made the assumption that what was submitted to the court was signed. I I cannot from my own Well, we, we, whatever we have, we have. So I just wanted to understand uh, what we have is signed. But your recollection is that it was signed. I do not have the recollection, is what I'm saying. Uh, and I would note that <coughs> I have one of these signs. So, we, but can just follow it up? So, we should we understand that, that that other than that signed under oath memorandum objecting to summary judgment, there is there are no other affidavits that were ever filed in the in the trial court. There, there are no other affidavits. I mean, there's no discovery pending. And there was no discovery request pending. I used the Church of the Swords answers to interrogatories to file my motion because I felt that. Their answers to interrogatories did not establish that they met the statutory criteria for this property to be exempt from taxation. What do you what do you say about your opponent's position that one of the things that the court talked about was that this was not a regularly rec recognized religion, but there seems to be some language in at least some U.S. Supreme Court cases that say that that you know whether it's been sort of long recognized or regularly recognized cannot be. Uh, that can't be the be all and end of Well, my comment is, is that we're dealing with the New Hampshire statute, and that's what the New Hampshire statute requires. I would also point out that when I asked the inquiry of the Church of the Sword as to the tenets of their religion, it named four sources. One is a, a foundation book of martial arts. Well, if that is a source of religion, then I suggest that the temple, every every store from that, that teaches karate, would qualify on that basis. Keep going. The other, the other one was uh, strategies of war. Uh, the, the Chinese one. The third one is um, uh, was was uh, Lao Tse, uh, the I Ching Lao Tse, uh, which is sort of foundation for Confucianism, as I understand. I'm not a religious man. The fourth, the fourth one was a German philosopher who uh, basically is, I understand, the foundation of individual anarchism. That is a direct refutation of the concept that you have any organized religion. I mean, why, I mean, why, why is that so? Why do you say that? Because if, if, if one is an anarchist, an individual espousing individual anarchism, then one is not part of any group or body. One is refuting the idea that there is a community. And the idea of religion, whether it's monotheistic or polytheistic, is that you have an organized community that has a sense of common purpose with those standards and values. The espousal of individual anarchism basically says there's no tether, no common moral structure. It's a refutation of, I, I think, the, the, the 
sort of the basic tenets. Aren't you, making a, aren't you making a value judgment there? I, I think I'm taking the words as they make, as they in their ordinary meaning. Well, so, so, so if, if we take, if we accept that, that would mean that somebody couldn't say, I'm a Catholic, for example, and I'm also an anarchist. You right. can't be both. That would be your correct statement. But I would also point out that I, you know, on that basis, I think anybody could, could, could apply. You know, the argument here is, frankly, that uh, they can declare that they're a religion, set forth a confusion, a conglomeration of ideas, that some of which are just internally inconsistent, and then qualify for religious exemption, which I, I don't think that's the intent of the statute. Because if you were examined, you know, go through an intellectual process and examine what they're espousing, it, it, it's a mismatch of things. Well, the, the, the problem I guess I have, uh, Mr. Wood, is this. Uh, you may ultimately be correct. I'm, I guess, frankly, I'm a little concerned that this is something that the court can properly decide on summary judgment. I mean, it may be one of the things, as Justice Conway pointed out, that it seems to me that the U.S. Supreme Court case law talks about it. One thing that at least can be required is, is proof by the proponent of the religion that if the religion that the views are sincerely held, that presumably could be something that could be explored by a fact finder. I, I guess I have some question about whether the record here is sufficient to say as a matter of law that these things, that this organization doesn't follow. Well, the problem I have with, I understand the, the court's reluctance, but I use their answers to the rivalries to try to show that they didn't meet the statutory requirements. Now, they have an obligation in answering the rivalries to give me complete answers. That they can't just go back on them or deny them or try to say that, that, that I wasn't entitled to rely on them. And I think their answers to the rivalries establish that you know, in my estimation, uh, that this is more akin to a book club that meets once a month and reads, you know, reads a book and then meets at the library and has a book discussion. You know, frequently in other arenas, let's take a medical malpractice case, interrogatories may tell only part of the story, and frequently counsel will take depositions to flesh out a summary judgment record. The town shows not. Take well, if the I understand that we chose not to take depositions. I, I felt the answers to interrogatories combined with the statutory provision, which places the burden of persuasion and proof on the taxpayer to establish that they're eligible for the exemption. What What do we do then with the U.S. Supreme Court's case law? Uh, as I have it on my notes here, um, the standard, standard articulated is whether the beliefs professed by the individual church and members are sincerely held and whether they are, in the individual scheme of things, religious. Can we really answer that question with the interrogatory answers? Well, I think with, within the individual scheme of things, we can. And I would also point out that the, I believe the Supreme Court cases, if I recall, recall, recall the actual existence of a church, the, the church property, and where it was actually being used as, an, as a uh, place of community and, and worship. We're, we're not talking about this here. We're talking about an individual's residence and the desire of that individual to avoid paying property taxes in the town of Westmoreland. And, and I would point out, and I don't know whether the court had any experience with this, but somewhere in the late, in the early 80s, they're going through the Nevada there were several individuals who were selling to people the idea that they became a pastor and that they then didn't have to pay internal taxes to the internal revenue service. Unfortunately, the individuals selling that package didn't get prosecuted, but there were many individuals who bought that package and then failed to file the federal tax returns and got prosecuted both criminal and civilly for failure to file taxes. Do we, do we understand, I, I, your, your, your point right, right there was that there was not, the, the request for an exemption is for the, parts, the parsonage, which is actually the place where one of, the, the, one of these individuals lives, but when services, 
Our service is also held at that parsonage, at least from time to time. The answers to interrogatories, I ask that the answers to interrogatories, which I put in my, uh, because they were not included. They're in your appendix. Yeah, they're in my appendix. It says, uh, it's interrogatory. All buildings, it's interrogatory 14, it's in the appendix. All buildings are used continuously as parsons and parsons stories. The land is used for hiking and garden and other recreational ed educational purposes continuously by the pastor and his family. No mention of any church. No further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you need your reserve time, Council? Yes, I am. I think the town's definition of religion, it quotes a few different type of definitions, and we can agree there's no concrete definitions. They're just too narrow. For example, the town asked how many members or many faiths be a free denomination or sect. That's exactly what the Unitarian Universalism Church is. That church has almost a million members, and they're a liberal religion with a bunch of people who come together. I suggest you don't have to be one specific religion to, or join in one specific denomination to be part of a religion. But you agree that you have the burden of proving entitlement to the exemption, correct? Yeah, we do have the burden of proving entitlement to the exemption. But in regards to the religion, I don't think the court or the town can say, well, we like this religion, we don't like this religion. Unitarianism, that's a bunch of people, that, that doesn't count. I suggest the tower, the tower religion. Unitarians count. What do you say? They count. <laughs> The Tao and the Tao religion, that has hundreds of millions of people, and they don't have a, a leader. They're ever evolving. And th this religion, that was one of their founding principles. It was one of the books listed. In regards to anarchy, I suggest anarchy, they didn't have to pose our minds and say, well, what does this mean? Or how do these religions specifically apply to The fact that they're saying anarchists cannot be religious, that we would disagree with. In regards to a regularly recognized religion, it may exist now for five years. The statute doesn't say what regularly recognized, but for the statute, it's not speaking. But there is, do I understand correctly, there is no, you, you describe this as a part, this is the, the place that you want the exemption for, is what you describe as a parsonage. Yes. But there is no church, is that correct? I mean, there is no, no central place where everybody comes <coughs> together for some service. In, in this <coughs> There is. They have those throughout the state. It, it varies on locations. And, and what are, and are those places people's houses? No, there are many different organizations. One happens to be here in Concord. Um, well, can you give us some idea? What kind? What are those locations? Are they, you know, is it all of them? They can be very different locations. So I guess it's not. Okay, give me an example. Sorry. All right. Um, one area, 23 down the road, is a an establishment. And have services every week. Okay, week. area, what kind of establishment is area? Yeah, that broadly, uh, I would define it, I guess, as a restaurant of search streets. So there's... So it's a restaurant. Area 23 is a restaurant. Okay. So they have their one service in a restaurant. Where Would else? you say that serves drinks? Yeah, well, they're also licensed to serve alcohol. Okay. Yeah, so both. But I, there's just many... There's, we were suggesting that a religion does not have to require the FDA and the special say church, temple, or what, where you're having your religion it, where your service is, that's a service. In this case, because it wasn't part of the town of West Portland or Ramsey, so that the patronage, I would suggest that the pastor are using it as patronage, that's what counts, but I would just finally point out that the court, lower court did not address that issue because they found that it wasn't religion in the first place. Thank you. Thank you. Case submitted. Who are Christian anarchists, or who are Jewish, or who are, uh, you know, proponents of a variety of beliefs? The you can't be an anarchist and have beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, the court, I, pres I present to you the idea that individuals cannot be groups. <laughs> it's a pretty faulty. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Actually, if individuals can't be groups... Excellent. Everybody we're, disperse. We're all anarchists now. Everybody is. Whether or not you believe in it or not. <laughs> that, just, that I would present to you that there stand, is no lawmaking body. If you stand too close to anybody else, then you become... Wait a minute. It becomes problematic. So there is no Supreme Court if there are no, if there are no groups. So what are your predictions? 
I don't have it. If they make a, a if they make a ruling on whether or not the Church of the Sword is a religion, they're going to have to the that it is. Um, I would, you know, they're either going to try to avoid that statement. Or they're going to try to they seem to. Uh, Are you nervous up there? Before I get up, I am one They like seem to be trying to define religion or themselves. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing about the court or they the, uh, the court. Yeah. Well, the problem is they're going to. We know that you know, I think which extent. court is the question. This I, one. I, I am not sure that the Supreme Court of New Hampshire wants to define religion. Itself. Yeah, but they, it sounded that's where the they're questions were going. It seemed to me. I am not sure that's where the questions were going, or if those questions were going to figure out what the town of Westmoreland's attorney was trying to do. Which could be two different things. Well, isn't the question in front of the court whether the case should have been thrown out and they can just simply reverse and remand back to Superior Court? Um, I think Dan's better qualified to answer that than I am. Hmm. Did, did I hear you saying you, you kind of thought that maybe they weren't, they were going to try to avoid answering that question and, and go through some other kind of procedure? And then what, would, what would that procedure well, be? Well, I could see, and again, Dan's the attorney, and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So um, my understanding is that one thing would be to say, you guys didn't do this correctly, go back and do it again. And that could be one decision from the Supreme Court. And the other one would be to say, we need to have a trial. Uh, in this regard and figure out exactly what we're going to do and handle it within the Supreme Court. You know, those are two distinct decisions that they can make without any further input from us. Yeah. And when you say you guys didn't do this correctly, as in like the town should have done that deposition that they were talking about? The town, the judge, everybody uh, else involved. It has to be. And, you know, and they might make that uh, a more strict definition that the town acted. Uh, without completing a process, or that the judge did not hold sufficient hearings uh, and gather sufficient information for them. Here with Dan Hines out in front of the uh, Supreme Court in New Hampshire, just finished giving his presentation. Uh, the court is looking at the question here legally as to whether or not the case should have been thrown out, right? That's Correct. ultimately what they're yep. doing. Yep, so the town of Westmoreland filed a motion to dismiss, which was granted. And basically that meant that at the, that particular point in time, there weren't enough facts for us to go forward. And I think the court had a problem with that in their questions to the town of why there wasn't depositions, why there wasn't more. And ultimately, I think this is an issue that should be decided by a jury, they're ultimately in the best position to judge facts, particularly a sincerely held belief. At, at this point, they didn't even contest this a sincerely held belief. So I think the court is going to have a problem with that issue. So they're not going to be ruling on whether or not the Church of the Sword is a religion. They're ultimately going to maybe come down if they rule in your favor. They'll just simply say, this needs to go back to Superior Court for a full hearing. Correct. I think they do have a few options. They could give some guidelines as to what a religion is. They could hopefully adopt the bright line rule that if it's a sincerely held belief, it's a religion. Um, that would... Is that the federal? It, there's a lot of federal guidelines, guidance on it. New Hampshire doesn't have any guidance on this. This is basically an issue of first impression in the court. I mean, they haven't addressed this issue before. So if they do do that, it's going to go back to a jury trial. And it's a fact whether it's a sincerely held belief. But at this point, they conceded it. The court... The lower court made no decision on that whatsoever, so, I mean, that's the ideal outcome for us. Now, the regularly recognized thing was brought up in there. Um, and the way the statute reads, and obviously it's subject to interpretation, yep. um, but the statute seems to, you know, include the idea of regularly recognized religion for regularly recognized religions. It also includes comma cults, comma, you know, one other thing I'm forgetting. Off well, the there, like a cult can't be regularly recognized by death. Well, its there's definition. the denomination sex and... Um, That's what it was, sex. Sex. Yeah. So sex is a little different than cult. Uh, but, I mean, to me, if you're showing up every week that's regularly recognized five years is a long time um, religions they don't suddenly become a religion after a hundred years and you weren't for the first 99 years so if the court were to read it that way I think they're gonna find five years is regularly recognized alternatively that that's a constitutional issue where the US Supreme Court has said that you cannot favor 
older, more established religions over younger religions. So right. uh, that's going to be a problem. Which as is well. why you know my reading of it is regularly recognizes separate uh, or a separate requirement or an al an alternative requirement to sect because a sect is by definition something that isn't necessarily regularly recognized. It's some sort of a breakaway or something that's completely separate. right. And the problem is sect is not defined in the statute or case None of law it's as defined. well. So. I mean, a sect could be, yes, yeah, certain subset, or it could be, it could be many different things. Yeah. All right, Dan. Thanks for uh, the interview. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan Hines. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums, so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire, with the Free Staters. <laughs>